Okay, we're back here in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. This is HP Discover 2013. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Inc. I'm joined by my co-host. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Mike Sullivan is here. He's the general manager of the information archiving and e-discovery business at HP Autonomy. Mike, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. It's good to see you. Uh, you guys. Uh, really starting to get the autonomy message out, get the integration going, you know, it took a while obviously, but, um, but you see a lot of leverage of autonomy across different business units. Uh, you know, we saw it with the Haven announcement, um, we're hearing people doing, you know, analytics, starting to embed that into their platforms, and uh, so, how do you feel? Uh, we feel great. I mean, uh, there's a lot of excitement at the show, as you know, about uh, big data, mm -hmm. and uh, that that is a big topic for me. I happen to work in the information governance space, so um, it, we have a different spin on big data. So we are, you know, for the same reasons that big data is such an interesting topic to people, lots of information, a big variety of uh, types of information that people have to deal with, it's very dynamic. Uh, those all present opportunities that is probably getting the most buzz in the marketplace and even at this show because people can uh, mine a lot of value from that information. But what I end up helping our customers do is focus on how do you govern that information? How do you manage the risk that can be associated with all that information? Which is a big challenge for companies Yeah, so today. is information, is it an asset or a liability? Both, <laughs> yeah, but both and clearly. And the, you're, in the, you're in the liability mitigation side of the business, is that fair to say, or? That's right, I think that's, that's how we get in the door on, on the, the part of the business that I run. We're helping companies uh, be compliant with uh, rules and regulations, we're helping them understand the risks that exist in all that unstructured information, especially communications. You know, today you have social media, media Twitter feeds, and uh, you know, um, messaging is obviously a big area, and uh, there's data privacy rules and all kinds of new regulations coming out every day. It's very difficult for companies to stay in front of all that, and we help them do that. Well, plus, the, the whole big data meme has changed the way in which people look at information. They're increasingly looking at it as, a, as an asset, and that creates problems, that creates a lot, a lot more liabilities, because let's face it, since, since 2006, with the you know, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the whole Enron debacle, subsequent to that, the general counsel had a lot of juice in the organization, uh, and and now the CMO has right. a lot of juice, and the you know, revenue often trumps you know what the GC says. Right. Al although, you know, there's still that balance. So it is a balancing act, but it feels like the the tables are or the pendulum is swinging, which again makes your job that much tougher or that much more lucrative. I don't know. So, yeah. no, absolutely. I mean, I think um, when you when you go out and poll CIOs, even this these days. What's top of mind for them? Information governance, compliance are, are big topics. And uh, as you pointed out, it's not just an IT issue anymore. It's uh, the, the kind of stuff that we deal with makes it to the boardroom. Uh, we deal with a lot of sensitive situations where your company could end up on the front page of the newspaper. And I uh, wish I could mention some of them right now because it would be really interesting. But we, well, we you, do some uh, really uh, get involved with some pretty well, interesting but for a period stuff. of time, you'd open the Wall Street Journal and every week there was a story in there. You yeah. know, I mean, even going back to, you know, when the government said uh, electronic, you know, email is an admissible record now. you gotta, you got to maintain that for X number of years. And, and uh, you know, there were hundreds of millions of dollars you know, lost right. <laughs> as a result. And so that was a big boon for your, your business, obviously. I mean, autonomy really started to accelerate after that. And, uh, and at the same time, it's a problem that never gets solved, right? Because, yeah. because of data growth, right. you know, complexity, and then cloud. Right. <laughs> right. So let's talk about that. So how do you, let's, let's, start, let's start with information governance. What does that mean? Well, information governance, a good question. Uh, you know, it, it's evolving all the time, but today it, it really is broadly means how do you manage the risk that's inherent in your information? And that can range from activities like just complying with the rules that you're subject to. And depending on your industry, that could be any number of things. It could be uh, 
you know, managing the disposition and retention of, of information, that's a very common thing. If you're a public company, if you're a financial services institution, biochems, pharmaceuticals, they all have those kinds of books and records types of rules that they need to comply with. Uh, the second area is mining that information just as you would in a big data application to understand what's in there, but the difference is you want to understand what the risk is in there as opposed to often the, the use case for big data applications is to find the opportunity. Give me that golden nugget. That's right. Yeah. And in this case, uh, people Give me the smoke and gun is in your business. You got it. That's right. <laughs> and then the third thing that they want to do for information governance is companies need to be able to respond when it's appropriate. So if you're a part of an investigation, an internal audit, uh, a litigation situation, you need to be able to respond and meet your obligations. There's preservation obligations where you have to issue legal holds and lock things down. You have to produce you know, massive amounts of information to the government. You have to make sure you produce everything. You have to make sure you produce it in a certain format. And you probably have a deadline that's uh, not a reasonable one because the courts haven't really caught up to the problem. And, and it's very, very difficult standard to meet. So what a lot of organizations did, they use the, you know, the, the we know the FIFO, first in, first out. The, the, a lot of them use the FINO, right? The first yeah. in, never out. So they retain it forever, which is dramatically increases your risk. Yeah. So you know, go ahead, talk about that a little well, bit. Well, I'd, I'd say in the last few years, that's absolutely true. We had a lot of companies come to us and say, especially in the regulated industries, we keep everything forever. And I think it's just now where what we're seeing is an interest in actually changing that. So uh, obviously, that's an impractical thing to do, I think. And most Even just from a cost standpoint. From a cost perspective, but and it's I also think risky. from a risk, yeah, right. right? I mean, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, it sounds odd, but it's a very hard thing to do is to know what you can delete when. And nobody in any company wants to be the person that pushes that button to actually do the deletion. So we're working on solutions with our customers to spread that risk over a lot of people and have them all press the button and you don't, you know. This is such a complicated topic too because, so but now you can, then you got cloud and mobile. Yeah. So yeah. risk yeah. has, Inher is inherently now distributed onto devices and in the cloud. Yeah. So, so let's uh, let's assume I delete something. I hit the delete key. How do I even know that it's been deleted? So, in other words, what does my uh, what does the opposing attorney know that I don't know that he might find or she well, might find in my records? So, how do you help solve that problem? That's a great question. You know, one of the uh, the other really important topics today for for companies that they're worried about and that they should be thinking about is defensibility. So, it's exactly what you're saying is. How can you prove that you're doing the right thing? And you know, you're held to a reasonable standard to do things. Um, and I think, and that's really the burden that you have is to prove that you're doing the right things and you have a defensible approach. So are you keeping everything that you're supposed to? Are you producing everything that you uh, are supposed to? And I'll tell you one thing that's changed. I've been in the, the uh, litigation and discovery business for a lot of years. And one of the things that's absolutely uh, changed in the last five years is Five years ago in a litigation or an investigation, you'd produce what you spoke, were supposed to do, and you wouldn't get questioned. You would just get the benefit of the doubt that you gave everything that you have. Now I would say every single lawsuit that we see, every uh, investigation turnaround that we see, there's absolutely a question from the other side or an accusation from the other side that says, prove to me that you did it right, that you did it in a forensically sound way, show me that you have a defensible position in the way that you collected things, the way you instructed people, and so forth. So you need a really good audit trail and uh, you know, proof, of, uh, you know, you need to be able to cover your tracks and make sure you can show that you did the right well, thing. Well, what happened in the mid-2000s is, uh, is a lot of attorneys would go after the process because the companies didn't have one. Yeah. And then there was the famous case where they kept submitting they kept asking people for all the electronic records, and oh, judge, we have some more, we have some more, and the judge threw it out, it was a couple yeah, hundred million. I think, I think, I think was, they were customer bars, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to name the name, because I think I got it, I'll get it wrong, but it yeah. began with an M. But, uh, <laughs> so, all right, so, so okay, so that's, that's interesting, and now, but then, this data influx comes in. Now, as I said, you got the CMO saying, oh, like, we don't really care about you know, the risk, we, want, we see opportunity, go, 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 go. So how has big data, and the perception that there's gold in them in our hills, uh, changed, you know, what you guys are, are able to deliver. Has, has it made your jobs harder? Has it made the, your advocates within companies harder? Are, you, are they collaborating or is it just a, a, a nightmare? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd say for us, um, we're benefiting from the fact that there's so much interest in these technologies to manage this, you know, massive amount of data. And again, it's not just the size, 
obviously that's the, the thing that gets the press, it's just the sheer amounts, but it's the way the data moves and how dynamic it is, and a lot of it, as you pointed out, is not in your control anymore, it's out somewhere in the world. Facebook uh, message yeah. is the example we used this morning right. with Robert. I mean, right. he said, you, yeah, that's an electronic record in some so, cases. So we have good technologies to deal with that, and, and you know, I think our customers from the, on the governance side and the risk side are benefiting from the advances in the R&D that we're doing to handle these other big data uh, you know, problems. And, uh, you know, we, the technology that we create for one side is helping for the other side. It's all a big data problem, it's just more about the use case. So, to, yeah. so tell me what's, what's changed in, in, in terms of the following. So it used to be I would shove everything into an archive, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes physical archive, yeah. Yeah. or I presume at this point it's a virtual archive. Okay, so you yeah. got this virtual container yeah. that has all my electronic records in there, and I maybe got a stub on my system or whatever it is. And so, so I, I know where the, the data is, kind of. Right, like I said, if it's right. on a device or it's in a Facebook, um, it's in a voicemail. I mean, I know you, you've dealt with those problems, but so, and I and I and I get a legal hold, uh, so I can't delete. It. Okay, you guys do a pretty good job on that. But what if when something becomes defensively uh, deletable? Yeah. Let's assume we can figure that out, and that can right. happen. So how do you ensure that it actually gets removed? That's an excellent question, especially as it relates to cloud. Because you know, cloud today, uh, if you go to an Amazon cloud or a public cloud, you really don't know where your data is uh, for sure. And it's probably, those, those uh, platforms are not compliant platforms from the storage perspective, from the regulatory perspective. So, you know, our platform is designed, it's got the same kind of grid computing infrastructure that you would see in a typical cloud environment. So you but deal we with can scale, ensure right, okay. that uh, you have spindle separation on your data, so that your data is not commingled with anybody else's in case there was a subpoena to pull that data out. It's very important that you know where it is and that you can, when it comes time to delete, know that you can actually wipe that data from, from a disk. So we have very specific features to, to deal with that. So we talk about cloud, you know, we're really talking about, when it comes to a compliance perspective, public, uh, a private type of a, a, a cloud environment, but leveraging a lot of the... And, and, and okay, so I believe you can tell me that something got deleted in my virtual archive, yeah. but you can also tell me that, you can, you, can, you can assure me as the general counsel that it got deleted on all the laptops, all the mobile devices, on the cloud, no, not so easy, right? Yeah, that's that's still a, our, you know, a difficult problem. We have uh, technologies that can address that, but um, you know, I think, I think the general strategy for companies is to try to pull that in so you have a copy but you're absolutely right. I mean, governance, one of the parts of uh, the things that people want to deal with in governance is control those endpoints, which is very difficult. And I think it's really about managing the risk there because you can't control what's out in Twitter and social media or on all the mo mobile devices. And you want to be able to detect that as much as you possibly can. We have some great security uh, things that we're doing at HP uh, and leveraging yeah. our technology to try to detect and prevent those things in an inappropriate Yeah, HP has an awesome security source. But, and then uh, as well, you kind of use, and I think others do too, it's not much, it's just pick on HP autonomy, but, but you do. Uh, you know, Oracle buys in DECA for a big number, because yeah. search is, is key, but you kind of use search as a blunt instrument. Yeah. You, know, you sort of aim it at the corpus and say, all right, let's go find what we need to find. And it's, it's, it works, yeah. but it's kind of expensive. I mean, a general, a, 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 a large pharmaceutical company can spend hundreds of millions a year on e-discovery because it's volume driven. Right. And so, can technology help solve that problem? I mean, for instance, can you, is, can, is, are we at the day where technology can actually auto-classify data Absolutely. so that you can scale uh, this, you know, with this problem? I would say that's the biggest trend in yeah. discovery right now is the movement towards leveraging technologies that we really pioneered to be able to understand the content. I mean, if you think about discovery, the two big uh, areas of spend are collecting all the data, but the biggest area is actually reviewing it to review what is relevant and needs to be produced. To pay the and lawyers. Pay and lawyers, <laughs> you got it. So, you know, the holy grail for companies is to be able to not pay those lawyers and automate it. Well, you can't automate the, uh, that process unless you have technology that can actually understand the content that's in a uh, in any you know document or piece of content. That's what we have. So we really have a very, very unique and highly differentiated offering because since we can understand that meaning through very sophisticated pattern matching technology, we can actually automate the process and, and put in a very defensible uh, process that is now backed by uh, you know court cases and a precedence. Oh, it's been tested in court. Absolutely, okay. Yeah, now okay. The, the 
courts are really starting to be a little bit sympathetic with companies and how difficult right, this is. Right, because at first they were just yeah. blind. The, you know, the, the courts didn't have a clue. That's and right. it was dangerous for yeah. technologists going, they just don't get it. I can't explain it to them. Yeah. They said, where's the stuff? Yeah. So, okay, so that's been tested in court it, now. It's really so very, in big. the very early stages, and, and most companies that have a lot of litigation are really starting to test this. It's called computer-assisted coding. Yeah. Uh, Technology-assisted review is another acronym you'll hear. So, that, so. that so that can help me with my e-discovery costs and, and dramatically lower them uh, because, again, it isn't just the volume, but the volume's growing. And the more the volume grows, the more lawyer bills I get, yeah. which just ticks off a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, good. This is a good discussion, Mike. I really appreciate you coming by theCUBE and uh, and good luck with, uh, with all these challenges. And uh, I, I predict good things for you guys. So well, thanks for thank coming on. Thank you very on. much. Pleasure meeting you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back with our next uh, guest after the short break. This is Silicon Angles and Mookie Bonds, The Cube. HP Discover in Las Vegas. Day three of wall to wall 3 days live coverage. Go to siliconangle.com and wikibond.org. For videos, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break.